Hey everybody, it is Dak here from the Ed Boys, and today we're going over some learner tips for Next. The goal of this guide is to teach you the basics of Next to get you started on the grind. If you're looking for a more in-depth Next guide where I go into a lot more details on everything that I discuss in this video, that will be linked in the description. There's gonna be three sections in this video. We'll start by going over the gear setup where I'll show like a minimum setup that I would go for and then some gear progression for what items you should upgrade once you start getting some splits. I'll then go over a full fight start to finish and discuss how to kill the boss and in the last last section, we'll go over just a list of tips and general things that you should focus on while learning the next fight. If you've been enjoying the videos or just getting useful information out of it, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. I also stream on Twitch, which should be linked on the screen and in the description. Thank you very much for the support, everybody. Next is mostly a DPS check, so you're going to need some solid gear to get started, but not max gear by any means. You also want to have at least 90 plus in your combat stats to grind next. It can be done with lower stats, but getting your combat stats up is one of the easiest ways to add some DPS and a lot of defense with both your defense and magic level. Here's the minimum setup I would go for for grinding next in teams. We have the Ancient Dehyde Coif, Fire Cape, Amulet of Blood Fury, the Enchanted Ruby Dragon Bolts, Osmumpton's Fang, Dragon Defender, Carol's Top and Bottom, Barrow's Gloves, Dragon Boots, and a Berserker Ring. The most important item here is the Fang. The Osmumpton's Fang is going to carry you through the next fight. You could use range only on next, but she's very weak to stab, and overall you're going to make a lot more money if you're using the Fang more often than you're ranging. Also, the Blood Fury is very important. Next does a lot of chip damage, and the Blood Fury will help make up for that damage a lot. It's not required to have a Blood Fury, but it's going to make a huge difference in how many brews you're going to use. Carol's top and bottom are very big for the fight. They have good magic defense, which is important in the next grind. And it's also important to have an ancient item on you. So I have the ancient Dehyde Coif. You could switch out for the Helm of Nata's Knot and then rock some ancient Dehyde Boots instead for pretty similar bonuses. For the range switch, I have an Armadil Crossbow, Odium Ward, Necklace of Anguish, and Ava's Assembler. If you're part of a large team, some team members could survive with just the Dragon Crossbow instead of Armadil if they don't have the funds. But the Armadil Crossbow is very nice when you have to use range. As you're getting better at next, you'll use less brews, but your first few trips, you're going to make more mistakes and need more brews, so you could narrow down the switches to just an Arma Crossbow and an Ava's Assembler to start. The bottom of the Envy, I have a Rune Pouch with Bloods, Cosmic, and Fire Runes, and then I have Book of the Dead so I can use Thralls. Thralls are very good for DPS during the fight, but again, if you don't have enough brews early on, you could leave the Thralls at home. To start upgrading from there, first you could upgrade the shield to a Twisted Buckler. The Buckler has six more range strength than the Odium Ward and another plus two magic defense. Uh, from there, upgrading Carols to Fortified Missouri is a significant boost in magic defense, plus a boost in range DPS. The shield and the Carols upgrades wouldn't add any more switches either, so you don't have to reduce your brew count. From there, I would look at upgrading the helmet. You could put on some Ancient Dehyde boots so you still have an Ancient item, and then get a Nate Is Not Face Guard and a Fortified Missouri Mask. This does add another switch, but also some significant DPS. After that is where I would start eyeballing the more expensive upgrades. The Void Waker is currently a little bit over 130 mil, but it is the best spec weapon for next. And if you invest in the Void Waker, I do suggest switching to a Light Bearer in your ring slot for the extra specs. One more switch you could add to your inventory would be a Glove Switch. The Ferocious Gloves are not very expensive, but you do want to match them up with the Zarya Van Braces for the switch, which are a lot more expensive. Also, Zarya Van Braces do count as an ancient item, so you could switch back to Dragon Boots instead of Ancient Dehyde Boots. Just don't forget to be wearing the Zarya Van Braces when you pray from the altar or when you leave the room. The Barrow's Gloves have very good defense and the Glove Switch is very expensive, so it's not quite as important and it's worth waiting until after you get a Void Waker in my opinion. At this point, your DPS at next is going to be pretty solid, and the big upgrades from there are like a Zarek Crossbow or even the Twisted Bow. The Torva Helmet is a very expensive upgrade for the Face Guard, and you could bring Bandos or Torva top and bottom to switch with your Missouri top and bottom, but you do want to stick to the Carols or Missouri while you're learning because of that good magic defense. That's a pretty basic rundown on some gear progression for next, but if you do have any questions about the gear, let me know in the comments section below, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Now let's go ahead and watch a full kill and talk about what we're doing during the fight. When everybody's ready, we precip some potions, the Divine Super Combat, Divine Ranging. I do tap an Imbued Heart, but that really doesn't make a big difference at all. And then eat some Angler Fish so we can be a little overhealed when we go in. The Divine Potions are still nice, even though you're going to brew down. Uh, once you brew down, like sip a Super Restore to get yourself back to maybe 99 attack or whatever your attack level is, and then you sip a Super Combat to boost back up, you'll still have that Divine Effect since you pre it. You won't lose that Divine Effect when you sip a Ceridoman Brew. All you do is lower your stats again, which can be increased by just sipping a regular super combat. 
It's also not a bad time to sip a Menophyte Remedy, which is gonna help save some super restores. As you notice, I did not sip one there, not because you can't, it is helpful, but you don't have to. You'll also notice that I will be tanking the cough here. She's gonna cough on me first, and I do not have the Slayer Mask or the Face Mask. Again, uh, you could save some super restores by having that. It's not a requirement to be able to get the next kill by any means. As the fight begins, Nex gives me the cough. Everybody is protecting magic. Whoever is targeted by Nex, it is helpful in this phase to protect from melee, but it's not necessarily, again, a requirement. Uh, whoever she's targeting, she will punch you occasionally. In fact, the goal is to get Nex to punch you. If Nex is using a melee attack, uh, she only hits one person with it. If she's using magic, she hits everybody with it. Next we'll say there is no escape looking in one direction and then dash attacking. Uh, you just have to make sure to step out of the way kind of like Sneaky did there. When Next gets down to 2720 health she will say Fumis don't fail me and it's time to go kill the first bodyguard. You generally want to range Fumis especially if you're using crossbow life those ruby bolts can be nice. He is weak to stab so the fang is pretty solid but overall just use a range attack on him and you do want to stay spread out. You'll notice that Nat Pack over there is coughing because Next has used her cough attack again and in a few attacks she'll also use that that there is no escape dash attack again. She's just alternating between her two special attacks each phase. It'll be every six attacks that she uses a spec. As Fumus goes down, Nex is in the middle of using that dash attack, but we're all protecting range now in the shadow phase. Her first spec she used here was Fear the Shadow, where we just step to the side. We are preferably trying to stay away from Nex because her range attacks do more damage in this phase if you're standing closer. Your protect from range does cut the damage in half, but you can still take like a 25 or a 27 standing right next to her while protecting from range. When she says embrace darkness, the room will get darker, and now it's even more dangerous to be close to her. If you stand too close to her, she'll start uh, doing the lawnmower against you. She'll hit you every tick for like 20 damage. You just want to stay away from next during this phase. We see as the Embrace Darkness attack is ending, she's also using that Fear the Shadow special attack again. She is going to just be alternating between specs. She stepped a little closer. If she does start running up to us, our goal is to step under her and get her to skip back to the middle. And if that doesn't go well, you can just run away after that and just try to stay away from her while healing up. But right as she's running in here, all of us go to step under her to try to get that skip. She also got down to 2,040 health there, so she did yell for Umbra's help, so we run over to fight Umbra. When Umbra is first activated, whoever is closest to her will be targeted by her, though that's not always, like, 100% consistent. You'll see in this clip that Sneaky is actually Umbra's target, but instead of protecting magic and tanking Umbra, he is currently being targeted by Nex also, so he runs away while protecting from range so he doesn't get messed up by Nex, and that allows Donnie and I to pretty easily go over to Umbra. Eventually, Donnie is the tank and he switches over to protect magic and we get a pretty simple umbra kill once umbra is dead we will be in the blood phase protect from magic again the first spec she just used she said i demand a blood sacrifice you saw that she turned one of us red and that person had to run away or else she was going to sacrifice you and heal some health the sacrifice wouldn't have killed him but it does do a decent amount of damage You'll notice we're back to standing close to Nex and protecting from magic and just using our fangs again since she's not doing extra damage for being close to her. In fact, at this point, we're trying to be close to her to force her into using more melee attacks. When she says a siphon will solve this, she's going to spawn a couple of blood reavers and she'll also be invulnerable for like 10 ticks. Actually, if you hit her for those 10 ticks, you heal her. So when she spawns the blood reavers, just go attack the blood reavers for a little bit. Again, we keep alternating special attacks. She's going to say, I demand a blood sacrifice. Somebody runs away to stay out of it. And then in five attacks, she'll say a siphon solves this and spawns those blood reavers back in until we get her down to 1,360 health. At 1360, she will shout, Cruor, don't fail me. It's time to go kill Cruor. Again, we're just going to range this bodyguard, and she can still use all the special attacks she was just using. So in a few attacks, she is going to spawn some more blood reavers. At this point, since we're almost done with this phase anyway, when she spawns these blood reavers in, we could really just ignore them. Once Cruor goes down, we are now in ice phase. You want to protect from magic still and be using your fang. Uh, she started off by saying die now in a prison of ice and she trapped Sneaky in that ice prison. So Donnie and I had to go ahead and stab the ice prison with a fang to try to break it. You can also break that ice with like a dragon warhammer or any other crush weapon, but the fang will get the job done. Her other special attack during this phase is contain this. She'll yell contain this and then have this big ice square around her that'll appear. Uh, that's going to do a lot of damage to you if you're standing close to it. So you just want to step back and use range for two attacks before it despawns. For both of these ice special attacks that she's using during the ice phase, if you are protecting from range when it hits you, it will cut the damage in half. But like you see with this ice prison, as long as we break one of these stalagmites, which Donnie's broke over there, then Sneaky's not going to take any damage from it anyway. And if you step back from contain this, you won't take any damage from that. Make sure you protect mage the whole phase. Uh, we haven't necessarily been protecting melee very often during this fight if you're being targeted. That is kind of nice for saving supplies, but do not do that.
that during this phase no matter what. You want to protect from magic the whole phase, unless, of course, you're getting hit by that ice attack. You flick on that protect range for just a second. For the most part, when learning next, you kind of protect from magic the entire time, other than shadow phase when you protect from range. So when next got to 680 health is when she called for Glacies. So we're over here KOing Glacies. She's still alternating between the two special attacks, contain this and die now in a prison of ice. And then when Glacies goes down, she's gonna heal 500 health and it's time to finish the fight in Zaro's phase. No more special attacks in Zaro's phase and no more bodyguards to deal with. She will be using prayers though. This first overhead prayer she's using is called Soul Split. Uh, it just means that she's healing herself while attacking you. After five of her attacks, when she's using Soul Split, she'll switch to Deflect Melee. So you're gonna wanna switch to Range Gear because if you're using Melee Gear at that time, she will deflect some of that damage back to you. After five attacks while deflecting, she'll just turn her overheads off completely and she'll use five attacks with no overheads and she'll just keep cycling through. Five attacks using Soul Split, five attacks using deflect melee, five attacks using no overhead. And it's pretty much just our job to DPS her at this point and get it done. So each of those phases really can be broken down pretty heavily and like each special attack, how to deal with it at like a more efficient level. But I will discuss that more in the in-depth guide that I'll be putting out for next. For now, we have one more section for you. Finally, I'd like to make a list of things to focus on while learning next. First of all, you want to lock into like your overhead prayers. She uses magic attack for each phase other than the shadow phase. After you kill the first bodyguard, you'll be protecting range, but then after killing the second bodyguard, you're back to protecting magic. When everyone is close to next using the fang, whoever she is targeting has a chance to take melee hits. So that player should protect from melee, unless of course you're in the ice phase. During the ice phase, you only want to protect magic and you got to pay attention if you get hit by the ice prison or contain this, it will turn off that overhead. Next does a lot of damage through protection prayers with all of her attack styles, but she hits a lot harder if you have the wrong prayer on. So overall, through the whole fight, you want to make sure you're getting those overheads correct. If you need to heal up while you're being targeted by Nex, it is good to step under her while healing. If you're just standing out in the open while she's smacking you, she can drain your health just as fast as you're healing it sometimes. It's best to spend only a little bit of time under her so you don't make her skip though, so you want to try to be quick while healing. While you're learning Nex, you'll get hit by all these different special attacks, but the more kills you get, the more you'll remember each spec during the fight. Early on, I would say these are the most important specs to watch out for. Contain this during the ice phase has probably caused the most deaths amongst our learners. It hits very hard, and if it's used right after you kill Kruor, sometimes you're just focused on like switching back to your Fang and you don't realize that she used it while you're running up to her. The Fear the Shadow special attack places shadows under your feet. This one is super easy to dodge, but often during the shadow phase, if you're too locked in to waiting for her to run up to you, you'll just completely forget about this and it'll hit you pretty hard. It's not super common somebody gets killed by this, but it is gonna drain your supplies if you keep getting smacked. And then of course the Embrace Darkness attack also during the shadow phase. It's not easy to survive if you do mess up the skip, but it is always possible as long as you keep your health fairly high before she comes running up to you and then keep a combo eat ready. Make sure to cut the corner tight in the middle there since Nex can't make that turn as quickly as you can and just keep chugging bruise. It is fine to use a bunch of bruise so that you survive the lawnmower. Nex is very strong. One of the most common complaints about Nex is that you use a lot of Ceridome and bruise. That's because she's doing a lot of damage. While you're learning Nex, you're gonna use even more supplies since you'll be making more mistakes just like with any boss so sometimes the most difficult split to get to is that first one but even just one next split will quickly make up for any potions used while i was learning small teams next a lot of my teammates were also learners so we were using a lot of potions and we would wipe some of the fights but everybody who has joined us at this point on a next night has had a great time and been part of some sweet splits that is about it for this beginner's guide. It did end up a little longer than I wanted for a quick guide, to be honest, but hopefully this was all good information for you guys trying to get into the next grind. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. I also stream on Twitch, which should be linked on the screen and in the description. Thanks again, and good luck on your next grinds.